Hello stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. Thank you so much for joining me on this video today. I am going to show you another idea to use with window sheets. Window sheets are acetate, I don't know if you could call it paper, but it's clear paper. I have done a series, this is going to be video number eight on different ideas to use window sheets for. This one is super cool because we're gonna die cut images and use them as stencils. And I've got some great tips using this technique for you that'll make your cards turn out fabulous. So I can't wait to get started. I've also got another card that I'm gonna show you using a different stamp set bundle, thinlets, and uh, I think you're gonna love it. Let's get started. I'll show you how to do this. So the first thing I did was I took a scrap of window sheets and I used the Falling Flowers thinlets for this particular card. And then I also at the same time used this trumpet from the Musical Instruments thinlet set. And this one is found in the Holiday Mini Catalog. It goes along with the Musical Season stamp set. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to show you the card that I made with this, it's pretty cool. And I'm gonna use just the flower and the Label Me Pretty stamp set with a matching punch. So the first thing that I did here, we're going to die cut these in the Big Shot. And I'm just gonna run those to the Big Shot and I'll be right back. I'm gonna bring in some grid paper here to keep my surface clean. I've already got these cut out. Now, I want to tell you, when you run these through your Big Shot, it is going to snap and crackle and pop, and you will like practically flip out at the noise of this. It sounds like everything is breaking, almost like you're cutting glass. So just know that that's going to happen, and it is normal, and it's okay. So I've got my trumpet here, and all I did was pop out all the little insert pieces, and also my flower from the Falling Flowers. This is our negative here, and we're gonna save that because I've got a great idea to use that too. And I'm just going to bring in a piece of four by five and a quarter Whisper White cardstock, and my Berry Burst ink pad, and a Stampin' Sponge. We're gonna do the flower card first, and I am just going to place my flower down here and here's where the good tip comes in. As I was making my original card, I found that if when I ink my sponge up, if I start with the sponging in the middle of my flower, that makes my flower darker. And then as you go out further, it gets lighter and it just has a nicer look to it. So that's what I'm gonna do. You have to make sure that you're holding your stencil in place firmly so it doesn't get away from you here. And of course, this is just window sheets, so it's a little bit delicate. You're not gonna tear it like you would a piece of paper, so that's kind of the neat thing about it. But you do wanna make sure that you're holding it in place firmly and that it doesn't slip away from you. So again, I've just inked up again. I'm gonna go back to the middle and then work my way out. And I just found that my flowers looked nicer when I did that. And isn't that pretty? We've got that deep color in the middle. And then you're just gonna put as many flowers on here as you would like to have. And again, I'm gonna start in the middle and work my way out. And I am giving this pretty firm pressure. Now this is gonna wiggle a little bit, so I have to stabilize it a little bit better here. Beautiful, right? I love these colors. We're gonna do one more right over here. Again, starting in the middle of my flower and then working my way out. Holding it in place. That's like your biggest obstacle with this technique is to hold it in place. Isn't that so pretty? I just love this. Now, if you wanted to, you could do co different colored flowers. That might be beautiful too. I could see just like a whole rainbow of flowers on here. Absolutely love that. Then using the pretty, or label me pretty, I came in with this image and then I used the circle and stamped over top of that again in berry burst. 
I punched it out with this label punch. I'll put up on the screen what the name of this is. I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but it looks like a cloud, so it would make great clouds too, which you could stencil. So there's another idea. And then on the inside, I just did another flower like that. This is our 5 8 inch wrinkled seam binding, which I just love. It's very easy to work with too to make great bows. And I mounted this on dimensionals. And you might miss that I've got a white layer just with a sixteenth of an inch margin around there. I've got a white layer underneath my stencil layer so that kind of makes it pop. That's just a really good way to take your cards from oh that looks good to hey wow that's really spectacular. Layer, layer, layer. I've always taught that in my stamping classes. The more layers you have, the more spectacular your card is going to look. It can really do a lot for it. So let's get to the next card. Where I'm going to bring this trumpet in. No, it's not called a trumpet. What is this thing called? This is a French horn, isn't it? I think I was calling it a trumpet. I apologize. So I can tell you a little story about my expertise with musical instruments, which, get ready to laugh, is extremely limited. So I decided when I was um, probably in sixth grade, that's when kind of band started for us at the school I went to, that I was going to learn how to play a musical instrument. I thought that was really cool and I wanted to do that. So I chose, we had a limited number of um, instruments we could choose. I chose the trumpet and I honked around on it for a while and you know drove my parents just absolutely insane. But as soon as we started reading music, I can't do that. My brain doesn't do that. And so my um, career playing a musical instrument was over abruptly. So that's why I don't even know what this is called. But anyways, I think it's cool looking and I like it. So I used Island Indigo on this one. And again, I brought my sponge in and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to start in the middle with the highest um, concentration of ink and then work my way out. And I'll show you in just a second why I think that is so important. Let's get this back in place here. And I'm not going to re-ink this, I'm just going to keep going because there's plenty of ink on this sponge. So, there we go, and isn't that pretty? Look at the detail you get off of that. So now I'm gonna do another one over here, and I'll show you what happens if you ink up and do your middle. Okay, so we did that, and that's all good and dandy. Now we're gonna go over here, and we're gonna do some of this. And again, I'm getting just a little sloppy because I'm not really gonna use this. If I ink up again and start doing over here, you get these blobs of color. And if that's what you're going for, it's fine, but that isn't what I was going for. So I wanted mine to look all very dark in the middle and then faded out, kind of like an ombre effect. Then the other cool thing that I wanted to show you, let's pretend now this is the inside layer of our card, which I'll show you finished in just a moment. And remember that negative I told you to hang on to? This is what I did with it. Right in the middle of my card where I'm going to stamp my inside greeting, I'm going to let this ink dissipate a little bit on my scrap, scrap paper so I don't get that blob of color. And now I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna use this as a stencil. And I got another really good tip for you because I made a boo-boo last night. I can share my mistakes with you. And then I'm gonna come in and stamp my words right here. You wanna make sure what I did last night is when I was making this card, I had it here and I'm sponging away and whatever and then look what happened. I went over the edge. So if you want to, you can tape a piece of paper up to that so that you have more of a mask there. Let me show you. This is the finished card that I was talking about. Isn't that spectacular? So I've got a piece of our foil, silver foil paper that I put down here first. 
and then a piece of island indigo and then some of our ribbon with the silver edge. I used some of our mini silver sequins and some black baker's twine and that pulls together the black that I used here. We've got the whole silver theme going on. I love blue with silver. I think it's spectacular. And then here's my inside where I masked where I use this as a mask and then stamp my words right over the top of it. And then of course I have a matching envelope using the little drummer boy out of the same stamp set. And then here is the other card with its matching envelope. Let me get this out of here. And I had a blast making these and I was able to pull them together in just a few minutes. So it's a super simple, easy way to use your thinlets and your framelits as stencils to make spectacular cards. Love these. So there you go. There is my final video on my series on window sheets. Now that's not to say that I'm not gonna come back in and use window sheets again on something different because I love window sheets. I think they're spectacular. I am just going to move on to other things and here's what I've kind of come up with. I'm super excited about it. I think I'm going to do a series on repurposing. And what I mean by that is repurposing things that you have around your house. Like sometimes when I get done with containers in the kitchen, if they're kind of cute and a nice little shape, I'll save them and put them in my stamp room thinking I can make something cute out of that. I've got all kinds of other ideas just spinning around in my head. Squirrel, because you know how I operate. <laughs> And I can't wait to share my repurposing ideas with you so that you can start thinking about some of the things around your house that you might be able to stamp with. Don't forget to click down here on my subscribe button so you subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything coming up. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd be happy to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com. I will have all the ingredient links so you can order any of these products on my blog, which you'll find right here. I'll also have all the dimensions for these cards and their little elements on there as well. So I hope you guys have a fabulous Wednesday. Again, thanks for joining me for this video, and I hope to see you Friday for my Feature Friday video. Bye-bye.